What's going on guys? It's Tom from the Green Knight Productions. Uh, how you guys doing today? Today we're going to be reviewing Nefarious. What is Nefarious? Nefarious is a movie that came out 2023, 2022. Not really sure up the top of my head. But it's a psychological thriller about a psychologist, psychiatrist, who goes to a prison in which they have an inmate on death row who is trying to plead insanity and trying to prove his insanity to prevent himself from being executed via electric chair. That way he could spend the rest of his life locked up in a cage, but I guess that's definitely preferable to being shocked to death. The twist of the film comes with the fact that the inmate, is named Edward Brady, claims to be possessed by a demonic entity called Nefarious. Now, this film was very similar to that of Exorcist 3, and a lot of other psychological films in which people are possessed by demons and there's demonic attacks. And at first, to give a little background information on this film, I was very hesitant to want to watch this because last year, about a year or two ago, when I started seeing clips of this movie, I saw one clip about halfway through the film, in which I saw again, where Nefarious is calling on the hypocrisy of left-wingers such as abortion, um, People in the NBA freaking out about, oh, well, you know, it's so terrible here in the United States, yet wearing shoes made slave labor in China. And that blatant hypocrisy. And I thought, okay, you know, this can be actually decent. And that's more truth than we're getting out of most Hollywood films in the past 20 years, not even remotely close. But I was thinking to myself, you know, this is more of a political film. It's not going to be as interesting as a lot of deeper truths that could be persuaded and be talked about during a film, especially one where you have demonic possession. And boy was I wrong. Because though that scene is in there, and it feels a little tacky, there's still a lot more truths to this film than there is just right-wing, left-wing politics of the modern 21st century. One of the best things about this film, and one of the questions it does answer is, well, if God exists, how come demons are allowed to prowl around? How come demons are allowed to attack people? Wouldn't God, if he's all good, all knowing, just simply <laughs> demons from existence? And by that, I mean, it seemed like a decent argument. The real issue is God allows you to have free will. And with that free will, you're allowed to destroy yourself. Regardless of how people might feel, and it does suck seeing people who absolutely destroy their lives, God gave you free will. You can accept him. You can deny him. But either way, it's your will. It's your choice. Nobody, there may be even an argument that even if somebody puts a gun to your head, simply denying that fact is denying your own free will and denying yourself to be a human being and have free will and move through life how you want to. That's how there is always free will. Now what do I mean exactly by this? There's a scene in the film where Nefarious explains how he got Edward Brady, how he got control over Edward Brady's body. The reason he did is because Edward Brady simply said, I will consent. You can take over my body. That's all he needed to say. Demons, much like vampires, can only really come into your body and take you over if you allow them to. Just like the original Exorcist film, a lot of people don't understand how that young girl had been taking her, her body over by demons. People think, well, you know, they just randomly did it. And while demons can attack you, they will ultimately not be able to take over your body and gain control over your person without your permission. And in the movie The Exorcist, <clears throat> The young lady played with the Ouija board. You open yourself up to demonic possession. And guess what? They don't play nice when they get a hold of you. And that's exactly what happened to his character, Edward Brady. He became demonically possessed by demons. And they did not have a good time. The demon messed with him throughout the entire film. And something I've been thinking a lot about, too, is a lot of psychiatrists and psychologists will pump people up on so many pills in order to numb them out. And a lot of, a lot of times, those people get attacked the most because the demons don't want them interfering with what they have to offer or what they want to take control of that human body. They want to humiliate you. They want to degrade you. Another question answered by this film is, well, if demons exist, why would they even fight against God? If God is all-powerful, all-knowing, then there's no way they can be able to defeat him. Not only that, but they got completely crushed by his army and by the Archangel Michael. Now, why exactly would demons even then try to do anything? It seems like a losing effort. A Pee Wee team going against an NFL team is going to get crushed every single time. Why even bother? And the simple answer is, 
They can't defeat God. And they know it. But what they can do is pervert you. They can take over your mind, take over your body, take over your will, and destroy you. God loves you. And therefore, if he was going to destroy anything and hurt God, they're going to hurt God through you. Through your possession, through your destruction, through your annihilation of your spirit and your body. That's how demons get back at God. Because they can't hurt him. They can only hurt him through hurting you. Which is exactly what they're going to try to do. So like I said, this film has a lot, and I mean a lot of deep truths to it. Even so much to where the ending of the film really threw me for a loop. Not because it's totally a mind bender, but because I thought they were going to do one way and they completely went the other. So it is a great film to watch. Now Logan Paul and a lot of young people might actually hate this film because it is so dialogue heavy. Because it is so, hey, we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about that. I just realized I got alfalfa hair sticking up. Oh well. But on with the film. They might hate this film because it is so dialogue heavy, but just because it's dialogue heavy doesn't make it bad, not even close. In fact, it might make it a little bit better because of it. instead of having mindless action, mindless violence, you have to have intriguing dialogue, an intriguing premise in order to bring people in. So if people really want to understand how the world works, how demons work, how they're going to infiltrate the world, how they take over you, how you can't really blame them because you allow it, this is the film to watch. So many deep truths in this film. It's pretty quick, it's only about an hour and a half long, and it has a perfect, perfect horror film ending to it. So I'm going to give Nefarious a 9.5 out of 10. It is that good. It is great. Go watch it. And if you're a Christian and you're really concerned, well, I don't want to watch a movie with demons in it. Understand that having a fear of demons and not wanting to be possessed by that world and understanding what you can do to stay away from it is a good thing to learn for Christians. And understanding that, hey, I love God so much, I want to stay away from that. Guess what? That's what you have to do in your life. That's how you stay away from sin. That's how you bring yourself closer to God. That and obviously going to church. But learning how to defeat demons and how to keep them at bay is going to help you in your life tremendously. So go watch Nefarious. It's a 9.5 out of 10. Thank you for watching. And if you have, please give it a like. Give it a comment. Tell me what you thought. Maybe even subscribe and share the film. Share the video. So thank you guys.